Well, today is the day. Hello everyone, welcome back to more Football Manager 2019 with me, Mr. Grantu, and episode 23 of Monaco, and quite clearly the biggest episode yet. We have reached the Champions League final against Tottenham Hotspur in only our second season of the save. A massive turnaround, considering that in our first season we did finish fourth in our Champions League group. We got eliminated in the group stage and uh, to make it to the final one year later is pretty remarkable. Tottenham are going to be our opponents today and whatever happens it will be a first because I think yeah, last year Real Madrid did win the Champions League unlike in real life for them so whatever happens we will have a first time winner whether it's us or whether it's Tottenham. Uh, Monaco did, of course, get to the Champions League final back, I think it was in 2004, um, but they lost to Valencia. And, well, a semi-final appearance, the only thing they've achieved since then, until this, in this fictional world of ours. Let's just have a look at the league, first of all, see how that wraps up. We did draw our last two matches. We drew one all with Bordeaux and two all with Toulouse. And then this was the final league table. We ended the season with 91 points, 10 points clear of PSG, who recovered from basically nowhere to grab second. Marseille did get the final Champions League slot, though. Uh, Lyon, Bordeaux and Saint-Étienne into the Europa League. Um, PSG did also win the Coupe de France. So I'm not 100% sure if Tuchel's going to get sacked, but he may well do. Um, Auxerre and Guignon in the end getting relegated to lose will have to face the relegation playoff but we turn our attention to the Champions League final that's all that concerns us it's been a very long season and this is the last game of it we are pretty much at full strength in terms of the starting lineup only absence being of course Ferland Mendy because he is suspended so Antonio Bueca comes in for him but otherwise it's the same as it should be in fact I've got my save team selection with Glick in there I want to put Mamano in there um, I do not want Glick in this match. So, Lafont is going to be in goal. Bereka at left back, De Ligt and Mamana at centre back, Sidibi at right back, Skov and Balde on the wing, Rabio and Tielemans in the middle, Golovin, who's loved the Champions League this season, in attacking midfield with Pietro Pellegrini up front. We can't field a full bench of 12, which you get for a Champions League final. Um, Bashega is on there, even though he's not fit. Neither is Tonali, but they'll do. Um, Ronnie Lopez is completely unfit. He cannot even be on the bench. Obviously, Gabels and Almada cannot be, uh, reg haven't been registered for the competition. So they will have to sit out for now. But it is the Champions League final at the Ataturk Stadium, the Olympic Stadium in Turkey. 76,000 capacity. It'll be interesting to see what the attendance actually is for this one. Well, there you go, 75,000 tickets sold. Not quite a full house, but considerably more than the, the Europa League final in Azerbaijan. It's going to be a tight one. It's going to be exciting. But we've beaten Liverpool, we've beaten Juventus, we've beaten Chelsea to get here. I think we can beat Tottenham. So let's have a look at the Spurs lineup. They've got Lloris in goal still. Pretty standard there. Rose and Vertonghen and Sanchez. They've got Kevin and Barbu. Kieran Trippier is not going to be starting for them, which I'm sure Spurs fans will be pleased with. Tia, uh, Toby Alderweireld is going to be in defensive midfield alongside Fernandinho. So not the quickest or youngest there, but both very, very defensively solid. No central midfielders, uh, but Son, Christian Eriksen, Christian Pavon, they've got out on the right, and then, of course, Harry Kane up front. Other than that, Malin and... Barrios, the only non-Spurs players on the bench. Have we got enough to beat them? I think we do. I think we do, but it's going to be tough. I don't want to be complacent because, well, we can see what happens in the Champions League when you do that. Let's hope it's a good final. Um, as this is the only game and as it's a big game, I'm going to bring you the entire match. Hopefully we can defeat Tottenham Hotspur here. I don't know. I felt I felt like we were probably going to lose against Liverpool and I felt like we were probably going to lose against Juventus and I felt like we were probably going to lose against Chelsea and we didn't. Um, we came out fast. We started really well, got a big score. 
which we nearly threw away on at least two of those occasions. But yeah, I feel probably that we might even be the favourites for this, which maybe actually means we're gonna gonna struggle. Barreca's got himself a yellow card already, which is great because I don't have. If he gets sent off, well, we'll have to bring Henry on. He can at least play there. But nothing happening in the first 25 minutes. A lot like the actual Champions League final, save for that Salah goal. Hopefully it'll be slightly more exciting than that. Well, a chance for Spurs. Pavon with the corner in. It's come out to Eriksen and Christian Eriksen opens the scoring with a cracking goal. Let's have a look. I didn't look like the best defensive header from Skov. Well, yeah, not, it's not really his... Forte and Ericsson slots it home past the entire crowd of Monaco players who look slightly befuddled with that one, but we are 1-0 down. It's been kind of a fairy tale run to the Champions League final. We kind of we've beaten a lot of teams that are better than us. We've done it kind of by the skin of our teeth. Um, we probably should have lost to Liverpool in the semi-final. But at half time we have done absolutely nothing. There has been one highlight in the entire game. And it was that Tottenham goal. Much improved performance needed in the second half. I don't want to change anything because the, the tactics worked so well this year. Skov with a free kick in towards Bereka. Can't find anybody though. And it's come back to us though with Skov on the right hand side. Hits the defender. Sadidi puts the ball in. And Babu clears. And Bereka hits it in. And Antonio Bereka, the man who should not be playing because Ferland Mendy is only playing because Ferland Mendy is suspended. Poor header from Mbabu, and what a hit from Bereka. Smashes it in. He's going to get his first goal of the season. His first goal for the club. What a way to do it. The man that was on loan at Benfica at the start of the season, who only got recalled in January because Jorge was sold, has equalised for us in the Champions League final. Oh, half an hour left, finally poised. We're heading for extra time as it stands. Pellegrini's not playing well, but I'm not bringing Falcao on. He has dropped off completely. He's already announced he's going to retire at the end of the season. Well, in October. I'm not renewing his contract anyway, so it's irrelevant as far as we're concerned. But I'm not bringing Falcao on. We're going to have to leave Pellegrini on. I hope he does it. does something for us. Doesn't look like anything else is going to happen. We've had two highlights in the game, and they're, they were the goals. I suppose it really is focusing on the key highlights. That is something at least, but yeah, nothing doing. Four minutes to go. We're heading for extra time. Do I make a change? We haven't really got anyone to bring on that I'd want to bring on. There's nobody fit, really. I mean, I'm probably going to bring Henriks on for Sidibe because he's not playing especially well. Henriks has signed a new contract, so he's going to be hopefully happy. He's slightly more attacking. But other than that, we've got Maria maybe for Golovin, but that's it. There's not really anyone else to bring on that's fit enough. Maybe Jack Clark, but I want to kind of leave Balde on. And we go to extra time. I'm going to say, you know, keep going. You've, you've, you've done well to equalise. Keep it up and we can get ourselves a winner. We can. We probably can. It's very, 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 very nervy, I think. Just those two goals. Both sort of hits from distance. Nothing else happening in the game so far. 30 minutes to possibly settle this. Otherwise, I really don't want a penalty shootout in the Champions League final. They're bad at the best of times, but not in a Champions League final. Nothing happening still. I'm gonna. I can't take Pellegrini off. I do not want to put Falcao on. Maybe if it comes to penalties. But Pellegrini's got good penalty taking. I'm not taking Pellegrini off. Keita Balde's nervous. I'm gonna put Jack Clark on. He's young. He's got energy. He's got pace. He he's been so good this season. He scored so many crucial goals for us. Is this his time? Jack Clark in the Champions League final against the team that signed him in real life. Henriks with a throw in. Here's Clark, the two substitutes combining. It's come out to Rabio. Golovin finds Telemans and Telemans puts it wide. What a chance that was. 
and we go into the second half of extra time, it is incredibly finely poised. The only other substitute I could really make, we've got two more, but that's the thing, I don't want to take anybody else off. There isn't really anyone on the bench. I don't want to bring Glick on. Bichelli is not fit. Tenali's not fit. I'm not bringing Falcao on. Valentin Rongier? No. No. I mean, Rabio is getting tired, though. So maybe towards the end. <sighs> Marie is the only one. Marie is the only one. I'm going to leave it for now. I trust the players that are out there. If it comes down to penalties, I want them on there. Golovin, we might have to make some final subs just based on the penalty shootout because nothing is happening. Okay, right, let's have a look. Who is good at penalties that's not on the pitch? Falcao is the answer. He's our best penalty taker. I'm not taking off Belegri. We took off Balde and he's our best one. He's, he's good. Skull's going to have to stay on. Tielemann's going to have to stay on. Oh, this is a huge risk, but I think we're going to have to do it. I'm going to take... I can't believe I'm doing this. I'm going to take Rabio off. Am I? Yes. I'm going to take Rabio off. And I'm going to put Bichelia on, even though he's not fit. And I'm going to take Golovin off. And I'm going to put Falcao on and move Pellegri back. This could go so wrong. Imagine if this goes wrong. Oh my goodness. Okay, time's up pretty much. Those substitutions do not affect the match. Okay, I've, I've never, I have done that occasionally, but we've literally subbed on two players purely for the penalty shootout. I think we needed to because they've gone into our top five. Imagine if they both miss now. Falcao and Boschelia. Please don't miss. It's a penalty shootout to decide the Champions League. Harry Kane steps up first for Spurs. He scores, obviously. That was never going to never gonna be missed. Right, we subbed on Falcao. It's his final ever appearance for Monaco, and he scored. He gets a drug for send-off, at least, I hope. Fernandinho steps up for Tottenham. He scores as well. OK, Yuri T. Elements. Been excellent for us this season. He scores as well. Every penalty has gone in the same place. Two all. Christian Eriksen, he's not going to miss, is he? He doesn't. He goes the other side. 3-2 Spurs. Right, Pietro Pellegri, do not, do not let me down. Do not let me down. Straight down the middle, which I hate. But he scores. Pavon scores as well. This is just... A masterclass of penalties. Robert Skov, surely player of the season. He scores as well, slots it down into that corner once again. Some exquisite penalties. Lucas Mora, he scores as well. Sends Lafont the wrong way. And it comes down to sudden death for Shelia. He's not fit at all. He's still injured. This is this this could be the this could be the one that backfires. Bashelia scores five all sudden death Jan Vertonghen for Tottenham scores as well I've never seen so many successful penalties in a row oh, they've got the advantage because if we miss Jack Clark with the chance against his actual now real life employers Tottenham Hotspur to keep us in the Champions League final he does it's six all Wan Yama steps up. Can someone make a save? Preferably from, you know, save a Tottenham penalty. Wan Yama scores. It's 7 6. This is horrible. This is why it's so bad to go second. Because the pressure's all on us. Benjamin Henricks keeps us in the final. It's 7 all. Right, Ben Davis. He's not match sharp. Come on, Alban. You've been so great at saving penalties. He doesn't save it, but Ben Davis hits the post. Finally, someone cracks. And Matthias De Lick is going to step up to win us the Champions League. If he can sink this penalty, he goes straight down the middle. And Lloris saves it. No. 
Davinson Sanchez scores. Antonio Barreca steps up. He scored the equaliser. He has to score now or Tottenham will win the Champions League. The licked, how did he miss it? Barreca scores and we go on. This is torturous. Kieran Trippier, he scored it in the World Cup penalty shootout. He scores again now. This is, I've never had a penalty shootout like this. Oh, Maman has got a score to keep us in. Why couldn't De Ligt just have scored? Why? Emmanuel Mamana. It's been saved. And Tottenham Hotspur have won the Champions League 9-8. 9-8 on penalties. I mean, I think they probably deserved it. They had more shots on target. It was a very even game. Oh, what a way to lose. But there wasn't really anything else I could have done, really, because I subbed on Bachelier. He scored. I subbed on Falcao. He scored. Clark and Henrik scored as well. I mean, oh, dear. Matthias De Ligt is going to have to go the rest of his career on this save, knowing he could have won the Champions League. If only he'd gone to the sides. Never go down the middle on FM. It never works. Oh dear, right. I can't be too harsh on them. You were unlucky today. It was a good effort. I'm not going to be harsh on them. I really can't. Well, there we go. A disappointing way to end the season, but a fantastic run to get through to the Champions League final, nevertheless. And uh, they say penalties are a lottery. Well, they are, kind of, but not really. That was a masterclass of penalties. We just, when it gets down to the centre-backs, there's only going to be one result, really. Um, and yeah, Tottenham win the Champions League. A it's AS Monaco defeated. Maman is getting the flat. I don't think it really should be you, mate. It's not your fault. You missed the decisive one. You may well be the John Terry of this situation, but Matthias De Ligt is the Nicholas and Elka. Well, we still get 13 million. And another 10 million as well from TV revenue. And some, wow, 5 million as well. So we lost the Champions League final, but we've ended up with 28 million cash. We're paying some of it out, but not bad at all. 26 million going for the Champions League final. Well, obviously, it would have been nice to win it, but from a financial perspective, you can't really complain. Absolutely, absolutely loaded with cash. Take that financial fair play. Yeah. Remember at the start of the season when you projected me to have a massive loss? 86 million profit. Thank you very much. Okay, let's have a quick look. See if we can get our end of season awards. And then that's going to be the end of the episode day. I just feel it's just such a lull now. I feel just so drained and empty. It was quite an uneventful match, wasn't it? And then just the, to come down to penalty shootout. And for the penalty shootout to just go on for so long. Oh. A shame to lose it, but you know, I'm English, so I'm used to it really. Right. Overall best 11. Overall best 11. Any changes. Lafont comes in. Um, T. Elements comes in as well. Balde comes in, unsurprisingly, really. Rabio 2. Um, Falcao still up front. Okay. End of season awards. Uh, Skov wins player of the year, as you would expect, I think. Um, goal of the season for him as well. Back against Toulouse. Lafont gets signing of the season, which is interesting, really. I've never seen a goalkeeper really get that, especially when we sign some other players. I would have given it to Rabio, maybe, but anyway. Skov gets young player of the season, too. He has been sensational for us, really. Team of the year, pretty much as you would expect. Lafont, Mendy, Glick, Delic, Sidibe, Baldati, Elements, Rabio, Skov, Golovin, and Pellegri. I thought maybe, maybe Henrix would have sneaked in there, but he didn't play as many games. 
Valdez, our top scorer, with 17 goals, which kind of says one of the areas I'm going to be improving. I would like, with Falcao going, I'd like a top-class striker. Pellegrini's great. I think he's great enough to be rotation and, you know, a solid second choice. But he's a bit, he's not quite there yet. I don't think he's there yet to be our first choice um, the entire season long. This has kind of been his season where he's done that, and it's not always been great. So if we can get a top-class striker... That's where I'd look to get one. I'd also probably like to replace Glick as well. Mamana may well end up being first choice still, but I think Glick probably needs to be moved on. Although he's, you know, he's experienced, he's been here for ages, so we'll we'll see about that. We've got 64 million to spend, quite a lot more wage budget, so we should be able to get some decent players in. And unlike Monaco in real life, when they have great Champions League runs, I am going to do absolute best to not have the squad be raided. Actually, before we go on, let's have a quick look, see if anyone's wanted um, from our first team. T. Elements is wanted. I know that Lopez is wanted as well. T. Elements isn't going anywhere. I may sell Ronnie Lopez, but I don't, I'm not going to sell many players because it's just not going to happen. So anyway, great season. We won the league, of course, won the Coupe de la Ligue, won the Trophy de Champions and lost, of course, in the Champions League final. But what a run. What a run to get there. You cannot doubt that at all. Next season, I think we've got to win the league again. We won it two years in a row. I expect nothing else. Obviously, PSG are going to go away and spend loads and loads and loads of money again. Didn't really help them this year. But next year, who knows? Who knows if they can buy? Hopefully none of our players. I'm not going to sell to PSG unless they offer me silly, silly, silly money. Lafonso for goalkeeper of the year. I'm not going to vote for this because it never works when I do. Pellegrini gets second place in the Champions League Golden Boot. Very nice. Um, Lafont and Balde are named in the Champions League Team of the Year, which is good to see. Otherwise, it's all Tottenham players. And Bobby Firmino. But yeah, Lafont comes second for goalkeeper of the season in the Champions League. Uh, Delict wins Defender of the Season. Which is interesting, because he's not in the team, but he wins the award. So please explain that one to me. Um, midfielder of the season, nobody in there. Pellegrini gets third place in forward of the season. We will congratulate Delict on his award. Well done. Shame about your fact you missed the penalty in the final, mate. But otherwise, I have no reason to complain about your performances this season. So as we mentioned last time, the board are going to upgrade the youth facilities, although the price has doubled. I know it's Monaco, but what? It was 5.5 million before, I'm sure it was, and now it's gone up to 10 million. Does that mean they're going to upgrade them even more? Do we get an extra upgrade? I don't know. Hopefully, hopefully we do. Um, Toulouse have won the relegation playoff. Oh, that's only the first leg. Well, they've won 5-1. They're going to easily, easily win that one. So overall, a pretty... Pretty fantastic season, winning the league again, getting ourselves one of the cups as well, as well as the Trophy de Champions, and a thrilling, thrilling Champions League campaign. What a shame about how it ended, but we gave a very good account of ourselves. Um, have no reason to be sad at all. So that is going to be the end of the episode there, and the end of the season. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, leave a like if you did, post a comment as well. Make sure you subscribe to the channel too. For the start of season three, I'm going to go away and make those transfers. A striker and a centre-back, probably the order of the day. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.